In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the feast of St. Francis Xavier, the great missionary, Father uh, Joseph Pfeiffer, and Father Tim Pfeiffer, and uh, numerous priests have been over to India, and, and in even parts of Japan, and areas where Saint, the great St. Francis Xavier went. And uh, some of them got to see the very incorrupt body of St. Francis Xavier. And that's the treasure in Goa in India. India has those treasures. India also has the treasure of the very place where St. Thomas the Apostle was martyred and where he brought the Catholic faith. So St. Francis Xavier was uh, going to be a lawyer. He had big dreams to help people this way and he was very talented, etc. And meeting St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Ignatius asked him, what are your plans? Well, I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to make lots of money, I'm going to be able to help people this way, and uh, I'll be able to donate to big causes in the city. And St. Saint, Saint Ignatius said the great words that has converted many hearts, and that is, what does it matter if you gain? What does it profit a man if you gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? And these words sunk in like a knife into the heart of St. Francis Xavier as the, long, as the young student. And he prayed on these words. And these words by the Holy Ghost tilled the soil of his garden of his soul. And he realized, so I do get a lawyer, so I do get my, my certificate of law, and uh, I make lots of money, and I make it well in this world. What does it all matter if I suffer the loss of my soul? <coughs> so responding to the call and the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and no doubt the good influence of St. Ignatius, he decided to become a Jesuit himself, <coughs> to become a priest. And he would be sent as a young priest to Goa in India, where he longed to go to the missions and in order to bring souls to our Lord Jesus Christ. His time in, in India was very hard. Um, hard people who were not easy to convert, and uh, when he's, what, the, what he built up in India was, was kind of subverted by other priests who came in. So this is one of the trials that St. Francis Xavier and many priests have to go through, many saints had to go through, where they suffer trials from fellow priests or from superiors, etc. So good St. Francis Xavier, uh, he labored much, he worked many miracles, he baptized thousands, and uh, he died looking at China, off the coast of Japan. And he went into Japan, he baptized many thousands, and many missionaries would succeed St. Francis Xavier in Japan, and we have the famous martyrs of the 15 and 1600s that were tortured in Nagasaki, and also throughout other parts of Japan. So the great St. Francis Xavier died looking at China. And that was his trophy. That was the big, the big trophy he wanted to bring to Christ, to convert. And he died. He died seeing the shores of China and uh, giving to God his last breath on the beach, on the shores, a dying of a fever. So let's pray to the great St. Francis Xavier. Pray for your priests to have um, the true spirit of the priesthood. And this was the great role of Archbishop Lefebvre, as we all so much appreciate. And us, us priests ourselves, we would not be priests uh, uh, if it wasn't for Archbishop Lefebvre, who was foretold by Our Lady of Quito, who in the Church of uh, Senegal in Africa, he, in, or in Dakar, he was praying, and he had a somewhat of a vision of the future, that his role would be to save the priesthood, 
to revive the spirit of the Catholic priesthood, which is not to be a social worker, which is not to be a, uh, a man like other men and just solve psychological problems. The priest is firstly to, to offer the sacrifice of the Mass. Without the Mass, the world would, would end tomorrow. There was no Mass. As long as the Mass continues, the five wounds of Christ are offered to the Father. The heart of Jesus is offered to the Father. And this holds back the anger of God and draws down floods of graces on souls. So that's why the fewer valid Masses that are being said and the fewer Tridentine Catholic Masses being said, that means that the devil gains a greater hold. And the priest is also one to preach the Catholic truth. He cannot preach his own opinions, although opinions may, may play in, but he knows and everyone knows it's secondary to the Catholic truth, to the Catholic doctrine that, that is our duty to preach. And the priest must sanctify souls through the bestowing the seven sacraments. And many priests have used their talents to build up schools, hospitals, to direct, to be military chaplains, to even lead armies in times of war when no one else could lead. In Poland you have some great saints and also one of them, St. John Capistrano. When all the leaders failed or were hit by bullets, it was the priest that took the crucifix and led the charge to defend Christendom, to defend Catholic Europe against the onslaughts of the Muslim invasions, for example. So priests can be called to many, many other things, but it's all ordered to the glory of Jesus Christ the King and the salvation of souls. You have one of the priests in Mexico during the persecution. He was um, in a small town. They didn't have many leaders. The Cristeros looked to him to lead them in, the, in battle. And he did. And one time he was surrounded by guards, Freemasonic guards who were coming around him to most likely shoot him. And the priest pulled out a pistol pointed to a lizard on the, on the rock wall, shot the lizard off with a very fine, fine target practice and uh, blew the lizard to bits. And when the Freemasonic guards saw what a sharpshooter he was, they all back, backed off and, and ran away. So priests can be called to many, many different things. In times of plague, St. John Bosco told his boys, I'm not going to force you. When we go out to take care of these victims of the plague, you also could get sick. You could die. But I will ask the Virgin Mary, Our Lady Help of Christians, to spread her mantle over us and protect us. But I invite any of you boys who have any ounce of courage to come with me and take care of the people in their homes, to bring them food, to light the fires in their fireplaces, and uh, take care of their children because many were dying during this plague in Italy, in Turin. So all the boys, not one of them stayed back. They all came and helped. And as St. John Bosco predicted, not one of them caught the plague, nor got sick, not even a cold. So Our Lady protected them. So priests, priests are always, they, they must always be what the Holy Ghost is, the father of the poor the joy of the soul, the consolation to those in sorrow, and those in darkness to teach them the light, to raise their heads to the light, that uh, we shouldn't be overwhelmed by our sorrows, and although many souls do get this way, they're so overwhelmed, they see no light, and it's the priest who reminds them, raise your head, you do have a home in heaven to look forward to, and God will help you. Our Lord said, I will... Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. And the priest must be this to souls. So this is why the role of Archbishop Lefebvre was so great. And he had the heart of a St. Francis Xavier. He really did. When he was put by the Pope in charge of the, all of French-speaking Africa, he took that duty very seriously. 
and he tireless, tirelessly labored to start schools, hospitals, orphanages. He traveled on the plane, because Africa is huge. He traveled on plane to visit his priests, to encourage them, give them retreats, and direct them. And sometimes, which a bishop or superiors or parents must do, correct them and admonish them. So the great, Saint, the great Archbishop Lefebvre, uh, he is still in Africa held in high esteem and still very, very held with a high regard. If you remember in 1995, in 1995, do you all remember the, the stamps that were put out by Gabon, Africa, the, the nation itself, the, the pr president of the nation had issued, in honor of Archbishop Lefebvre, the 25 anniversary year stamp of the founding of the Society of St. Pius X. And it was the national stamp that went all over the world with Archbishop Lefebvre's picture on it. So it was in 95. So they all remember him. And the nuns that are still there, priests that are still there, catechists, they remember him fondly. So we, we all owe great gratitude to Archbishop Lefebvre. So it'd be most fitting for me to just remind you of some of his great words regarding the present war we are in right now with our leaders of the Society of Pius X leading the ship, the little raft boat of the Society of Pius X right into the rocks. Listen to Archbishop Lefebvre. This is on... Can Rome be trusted? For 15 years we dialogued to try to put the tradition back in its place of honor, in that place in the church which it has by right. We ran up against a continual refusal. What Rome grants in favor of this tradition at present is nothing but a purely political gesture a piece of diplomacy so as to force people into compromise, but it is not a conviction of the benefits of tradition. Archbishop Lefebvre, that was in 91. Don't trust when Rome grants traditional crumbs, it's not to be trusted. It's not to be trusted until the Pope comes fully back to tradition and condemns Vatican II and the new Mass. And so the games that Bishop Follet is playing with Rome now... <coughs> They're just tying the noose around his neck with the promise of personal prelature. And what people are forgetting is that he actually did already compromise on a new teaching, on a new doctrine, on a new faith. And this is what's most grave. And that was four years ago signing the doctrinal declaration. This was why the resistance is necessary. And if we fall... If the priests of the resistance fall, God will raise other priests. And if they fall, God will raise rocks out of the street to preach the Catholic faith and defend the Catholic faith and defend the honor of Christ the King. So <coughs> we hold the line of Archbishop Lefebvre. That's it. Here's another, Archbishop Lefebvre, 1991. So this is just a few months before his death. When they say that Dom Gerard that is, he was the abbot of La Barue Monastery in France, and the Fraternity of St. Peter, when they say they don't have to give anything up, that's false. They have, been, they have given up the ability to oppose Rome. They cannot say anything anymore. And that's why in 2012, Menzingen put a fax out to all the Society of St. Pius X priories, they are no longer allowed to preach against the agreement with Rome. I was there. I saw that fax. And they cannot say, oh, that's rumor. I saw the fax. And it was orders from the top, be quiet. So when the dogs can no longer bark against the thieves breaking in, what good are those dogs, right? They have given up the ability to oppose Rome. They cannot say anything anymore. They must remain silent, given the favors that have been granted to them. The favors of, you can say the Latin Mass, 
you can have seminaries, you can do this, you can do that. It is now impossible for them to expose the errors of the conciliar church. Softly, softly, they adhere, even be it only by their profession of faith. That's the new profession of faith that admits Vatican II and the new Mass, which Bishop Follet fully accepts now, since 2012, in the doctrinal declaration. Even if it be only their profession of faith that is requested by Cardinal Ratzinger, I think Dom Gerard is about to publish a small book written by one of his monks on religious liberty and will try to justify it. Now, religious liberty is one of those heresies that the Catholic Church in her tradition has continually condemned. What is, it? What is this religious liberty? It says that any man can believe what he wants and still get to heaven. That the state can be neutral on matters of religion and the state doesn't have to profess the Catholic faith. Those are the sins, these are the heretical errors of religious liberty, condemned over and over again by the church. From the point of view of ideas, they begin to slide ever so slowly and end up by admitting the false ideas of the council. Because Rome has granted them some favors of tradition, it's a very dangerous situation. And I'll, I'll give this last one from Archbishop Lefebvre in 1988. That is why, taking into account the strong will of the present Roman authorities to reduce tradition to nothing. This is what they're forgetting. These enemies of Christ want to destroy the Catholic faith. They want to exterminate the Catholic tradition and get rid of the Mass, get rid of the, the, the true doctrine from the face of the earth. So they are not friendly even though they might have many smiles, even though they might offer many deals, they are not friendly, and they cannot be trusted. Archbishop Lefebvre, he dealt with them, he wrestled with them, he tried, and he saw how they continually betrayed our Lord. To gather the world, they, they, their, their efforts to gather the world to the spirit of Vatican II, and the spirit of Assisi, we have preferred to withdraw ourselves, and to say that we could not continue. It was not possible. We would have evidently been under the authority of Cardinal Ratzinger, president of the Roman Commission, which would have directed us. We were putting ourselves into his hands, and consequently putting ourselves into the hands of those who wished to draw us into the spirit of the council and the spirit of Assisi. This was simply not impossible. For them, says Archbishop Lefebvre, their goal is to divide tradition. They already have Father Augustine. They have Father de Belignere. And now they have Dom Gerard. This weakens our position still further. It is their goal. Divide to make us disappear. Divide to make us disappear. Now the, the, there's no doubt the Freemasons in Rome and the enemies of Christ are behind the division now in the society and the division in the resistance. It's, it's, it's all these their efforts to destroy the Catholic faith. But as Tertullian said, go ahead, mow us down. The more you kill us, the more we grow. The blood of martyrs is the seed of Christians. So that's what we say. Go ahead. Try to crush our Catholic faith. Try to destroy our mass. Try to kill us all. The more you kill us, the more you try to squelch Catholic tradition, the more it's going to grow. The blood of martyrs is the seed of Christians. And that is the spirit of Archbishop Lefebvre. That's the spirit of the missionary spirit of the Catholic Church. Christ is king. We declare him as king. We fight for him as king. And we want him to reign over our country, over our families, over our, society, our city, over our souls. And this is what God wants, that Christ reign. We say it every day, many times a day. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And earth includes politics, economics, the social life, advertising, the city life, the entertainment life. Everything belongs to Christ the King. 
on earth as it is in heaven. Christ must reign. And this was the spirit of those great missionaries like St. Francis Xavier, Archbishop Lefebvre. And so um, it is one of these deadly tactics of modernist Rome is give many carrots, give many promises, give many candies, and make many promises as long as they just start being more and more quiet against Vatican II and, and stop exposing and preaching publicly against the scandals of the modernist popes and the modernist bishops. And don't forget one of the conditions. There are six conditions Bishop Fillet and the leaders signed on to. Six conditions to make this agreement with Rome by which they bound the society. And one of these conditions is to come under the local diocesan bishop. And it's already been, it's already been enacted down in Buenos Aires as a testing ground. They're already under the diocesan bishop. What does that mean if you're under the diocesan bishop? That means, <laughs> well, firstly, what the bishops are interested in, part of the collection goes to the diocese. That's the main thing they're interested in. But the other interest is slowly suffocate the faith and slowly bring the whole parishes into the novice order of thinking. And how do you do that? Just get them to be quiet and stop fighting. Kill the militant spirit. And we belong to the church militant. We don't belong to the church Hilton Hotel, the church Ramada Inn. We belong to the Catholic church militant. We all have to fight, even you good old ladies. Uh, you are fighting. Your daily rosaries may even do more than many, many sermons and many, many uh, buildings. Your rosary, well said, can shake the heavens and convert souls and snatch souls from being dragged down to hell, even in their last moments. This is why, this is why union with the Blessed Trinity is, is everything for us, to do everything in union with the Blessed Trinity who dwells in the soul by grace. So that means everything you do becomes a prayer, becomes an act of sacrifice. Everything. Your tears, your joys, your meals, your sleep, your work, your, your fun, your recreation, your exercise, your hammering nails, your bearing this heat in Phoenix. Well, of course, this is winter now, so it's not bad. But uh, <coughs> everything. We want to offer everything out of love for God. And even our last breath, our death, in union with Jesus crucified. So that's, that's what we're here for, to glorify God. So let's pray to these great saints, and St. Francis Xavier in particular, to inflame us with the love of God, a love of souls. And I beg you also, since he was a great priest, pray for all the priests. You know many good society priests, there are also many good St. Peter priests and many even Navasoto priests who just don't know. Gotta, we got to pray for all of them. And I beg you, don't forget the priests, especially of the resistance. We need it very much. The devil's throwing all kinds of missiles. And, uh, but don't forget also the priests in purgatory. There was a devotion that an old priest in New Jersey, Father uh, Doyle, I think was his name. He was an old priest from Ireland and he promoted a devotion that never fails, he says. And he says, if you pray three Hail Marys for the three most abandoned priests in purgatory, the most forgotten priests that nobody ever thinks or prays for, and they could be there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Pray three Hail Marys for the three most abandoned priests in purgatory, and uh, the, the, the request never fails, Father, this Father Doyle used to say. So anyway, whether it fails or not, doesn't really matter. Pray for the souls in purgatory, especially priests and bishops, and dare we say, popes. <laughs> These modernist popes will be lucky if they make it to purgatory. They will be lucky if they make it to purgatory. Because by their modernism in Vatican II, they have dragged so many souls to apostasy, so many souls to hell. It's not funny at all. It's frightening. So, O Mary conceived without sin. Amen.
O Mary conceived without sin. O Mary conceived without sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.